Hey guys, it's Rob over at Larabi's. I just wanted to make a little introduction here, talk about our unit, the set temp, why this is even a discussion. And then at the end, I'll go ahead and show you how to change the temperature if you feel like for your application, your bees in your yard, um, it makes sense to have a lower set temp. I personally don't recommend this, but I also recommend things that aren't um, necessarily normal. So some people will treat, for one of those examples, some people will treat in the dead of winter. When it's snowing out on the ground, and they'll, they'll treat them and they'll say, oh, well, my bees are clustered. I got no problem treating them. And you're, you're probably right, but I don't have enough hard evidence myself to say otherwise. Um, and I know that when you treat them when they're not clustered, you're not forcing them to break cluster, which could cause them to freeze if you do it at the wrong time. And if they stay broken in their cluster for a long time, you can really have a problem with that. But what I also believe is that when they're not in a cluster and they're moving throughout the hive, they're able to fan out their wings and move the acid through the hive a lot more effectively. Granted, there will be cap roots, so the treatment is less effective technically than it would be with a broodless environment. But if the bees need more air or need more whatever, I feel like they would be able to circulate that air through the hive and you're not choking them out per se. Um, there's a lot of other vendors who recommend that as well, not as far as oxalic, <coughs> excuse me, as far as oxalic acid, but as far as like Formic Pro, Formic Pro, they tell you not, not to use it below 50 degrees. Um, Formic Acid is actually one of the things that people are saying, hey, you can get Formic Acid from your oxalic acid when it degrades. It is from the same category as they're both organic acids. However, the amount that when oxalic acid degrades, I haven't seen any body say online except for form posts, not actual scientific studies, how much oxalic acid is converted into formic acid after it degrades and at what specific temperature and what period of time that degradation happens. So that being said, the only thing that I've seen in form posts and it seems like a lot of people had commented it was that you had like 1% of the oxalic acid dosage after degradation would turn into formic acid and only putting two grams in a box that's that's super minimal. I, I mean, in my opinion, that's like the end of a pen. Um, again, I'm no scientist. This is just what I've kind of concluded here. I've got some notes spread out from, from some articles that I've looked up and some scientific studies. So the reason why that's important is also to keep in mind that formic acid is technically, while well, everybody, ha everybody has their different views on it, I get it. It is technically an approved way to treat your bees with Honey Super Zone, I believe. I don't have that much knowledge base on Formic Pro, but from their website, that's at least what I believe I read this morning. So that being said, their product also contains like 43% uh, Formic Acid and their strips like this, which means you've got a chunk like this of just Formic Acid in that hive for a couple weeks. So in my opinion, if you were going to do any damage with formic acid, um, you would do it in a larger volume than a smaller volume, which is why the claims of, hey, you're putting formic acid after degradation into the hive, it's not that alarming to me based on that. Now, if, there, if you're watching this and you know somebody who's a scientist who'd be willing to take this up, I, I would love to have hard information to be able to show to people like you who have these questions who can walk us through it so that I can better refine things and really become the next tier as far as the bee world. But for now, we chose the 400 degree set temp because every other PID controlled vaporizer on the market shares that same property at 400 degrees. It'll pass it by about 60 or so and a level out. Um, when you do a treatment you'll see with our unit, like I did, I did rounds on my bees two, three nights ago, something like that. We had some high temp days here. We were in the 60s, excuse me. Um, and I went ahead and did my treatments. I didn't see that high of temps. It, it went up high like normal. I did my treatment drop. 
and it went down to like 300 because our air temp wasn't too hot out uh, and it climbs it gets to it climbs pretty quick to like 350 350 you can tell it starts to sublimate or boil the acid all the way up until about 370 375 something like that if you're really watching the time on when the numbers are changing on the on the controller and then from 375 to 400 it's basically just getting the last little bit of whatever out of that bowl it is the last little bit of acid is coming out at 400 you remove granted it will go much higher but I always tell people when it hits 400, you're done your treatment, remove it. You can sit on top of the hive, get ready for the next treatment. Um, in it going above 400, it basically burns off, for lack of a better word, burns off whatever will be left over in the stem and the bowl. And it heats up the stem to the right degree for when treatment happens. But But basically it ensures that you have a minimal amount of clog. So if you turn the temperature down, you could see more clogging because the acid just isn't getting hot enough to stay uncrystallized as it moves into the beehive. Um, along with just bad treatment temps because like I said, our, our unit cuts off at about 370 or so if you ever watch it, somewhere in that sweet spot range with the heater. So then from there on out, it's not really putting any more power in, which is where the complaint is um, about the PIDs is that it's essentially degrading it by adding Problem that actually the line was probably degrading from adding too much heat. Um, but after the, the sublimination temperature of 370 degrees, there is no more heat going to it. It's just kind of catching up. And once there's no heat, no oxalic acid left in the bowl, it doesn't have an insulator and it just goes back up to its normal set temp, not normal over temp back to its set temp. All right, so that just about wraps up the video. Uh, I just want to kind of go over a little bit of it, my opinion on why uh, 400 is still a safe set temp. That's what I plan to keep putting on all the units. It's what we've had great success with. All of our customers have healthy bees as a result. So we're going to keep doing that. Um, but here coming up, I'm going to show you how to change it if you are on the fence. Again, I want you to do something that you're comfortable with doing to your bees. Um, from a mental standpoint, you need to be able to feel like you're making a difference for your bees. And if the information that you read online says something different and you want to have a lower set temp, that's okay. That's the good thing about buying a PID controller, especially one from us, is I'll walk you through how to change it. You know, I, I don't want to be the guy to say, oh, no, you, you have to run a unit our way or you have to use one of the, the torch ones, for example, where you have no idea how far overheat you're putting on, you know, a small corner of the bowl or, or what have you. So, so anyway, so I'm going to do a little cutscene here and walk you through that. It's really easy. Don't hold any buttons when you do it. You can mess it up. If you hold the blue button, it goes into auto tune. It'll hold, throw the whole thing out of whack. Just be careful. Don't hold buttons, just click them and you'll do just fine. So anyway, here it goes. Thanks for watching. And uh, I look forward to hearing your, your uh, comments and stuff. And uh, yeah, Happy New Year. All right, guys, so this is the Larabi's unit. Uh, you can see it here. Power button's here. I have it plugged into my wall over here. So all you do is flip the unit on. I just had this on a second ago, so it'll be a little warm. But it's got 400 here. All you do is you click the blue button, see how it's flashing like that, and you go all the way, it's hard for me to do without having my fingers in the way. You can go here and use the up and down arrows and go to 380 if you want. And then you just click the set button, the yellow one, there. Again, you don't hold any buttons. You can change this to any temperature you like. Do not hold the blue button but you click the blue button to move over. I'm gonna move this back up because I run all my units at 400 and it's what I recommend, it's what everybody does. But again, if, if you don't feel comfortable doing it, you need to be able to, I gotta turn this off. You have to be able to do that. It doesn't have any acid, just a new heater kicking in. But you have to be able to be comfortable with your unit.
Everybody for decades has treated at 400 degrees without problems and negligible from what everybody's talked about, negligible amounts of any other chemicals being found uh, at the higher temps. Nobody can tell what the higher temps are, but again, that's just the, the real quick DIY on how to change your PID. All of them will be semi-similar, -sim but you wanna get one that, you know, a unit in general that you can read the temps on that you trust. So anyway, uh, if you have any questions, comments, anything, leave them below and uh, have a good one.